I've been doing drugs since I was uh, seven years old. By 15, I was out of the house. By 16, I was shooting up drugs intravenously. I've done every drug there is at least once. I think I experienced depression and symptoms of mental illness throughout my childhood in high school, college. Um, but I was able to mask them. I didn't understand them. I started at the age of about 25 or 26 experiencing extreme mania without understanding what mania was. At the age of 12, I started transitioning. Um, at the age of 15, I started prostitution. Um, at the age of 17, 18, I started using drugs. Drugs for me was a way for me to numb myself, dumb me down. My heart, my spirit, and my mind were no longer aligned. That there was definitely a disconnect between what I believed in and how I was behaving. At the time, my life spun out of control. Due to my mental illness and substance abuse, I was out on the street homeless for many years. I was in college using drugs. I was in the military using drugs. As far back as I can remember, I was using drugs. The bottom for me was living in old houses, eating out of trash cans, getting high in abandoned buildings with rats, being arrested. I think even before then, I had to get my children up. I um, tried to commit suicide in a crack house. And the guy that owned the house told me that I had to leave because I was too dangerous. Because if I was willing to kill myself, what would I do to other people? He put me out, I had nowhere to go. And it brought me here to the Department of Behavioral Health. There has been historically in Philadelphia a lot of great work that has happened here and, and the city has been really viewed as an innovator in the field. And I think what's exciting is that we have an opportunity to build off of that work uh, and to take it to the next level. Transformation is about how we are evolving our system to focus on long-term recovery for people who have behavioral health problems, mental health disorders and substance use disorders. We had a ways to go to really make the system a recovery-oriented system where that was the focus and that our resources were organized around that principle. Probably more than almost any place in the country, uh, Philadelphia has brought multiple elements together in ways that are fundamentally changing the design of addiction treatment. Philadelphia has really been this, the centerpiece in sort of launching this recovery revolution. We're not tinkering at the edges. We are changing fundamentally uh, practice at all levels. Uh, so that means how we uh, provide services. It means how we finance services. It means how we interrelate with the community. A, a big emphasis is on, um, on our relationships with the community and changing those, those relationships. So it's not simply adding new things to the system. It's changing the system itself. You know, our struggle to get here was 33 or more years of active addiction. And I was one of those people who they found on the street. I was plugged into the Access Project, which is uh, my home project that I came out of. The project that got me to talk to a psychiatrist and a psychologist. They got me um, classes and they had job skills. And through that, I was able to come to the city for the Department of Behavioral Health because of my um, long history of drug abuse and of behavioral health issues, you know, having a diagnosis. I never thought that I would hold down a job with the city of Philadelphia or for, any, for that matter, any particular employer. So right now I'm in, a pretty, I'm in a pretty good space. I stay busy. I remain clean without any relapse or chemical dependency since then. And I thought that was a miracle in itself. Inherent in every community is the, is the wisdom to solve its own problems. I think that's at the heart of the recovery transformation, which is that it is a movement, so to speak, that is built on the idea that you can do it, we can help. And that's what re essentially what we're trying to do. My son was paying mortgage on his house, and there's nobody in it. And, and I looked at him and I said, Eric, let mommy have the house. And he said, what are you going to do with it? Uh, let me open it up for women. And he's looking at me and he said, open it up for women? I said, yeah, let me make it a recovery house. It's okay to recover, learn how to live again, and do it right here. Learn how to cook again, clean, you know, wash your clothes, re-enter yourself into society again, which is so hard to do. I was a heroin user for 28 years, and I also have to take my medicine because I suffer from mental health also. Um, put my son through a lot of pain and um, made a decision to stop. 
that I had enough. And here I am. When people come into recovery and they come off substance or getting right with their medications, they need something to do. You can't just sit here. You need to make a new path for yourself. Get new stories in your life. Now I see our participants and they see themselves in a different light. We have um, participants who are now taking public transportation. We have participants who um, never attended co-occurring or NA meetings out in the community. Now they attend those meetings. It gave us an opportunity to do more community integration, to address recovery and their mental illness with a holistic approach that includes spirituality, um, case management, housing benefits, family inclusion, and just allowing the participants to see what their community and the city of Philadelphia can offer them in their recovery. There are some key principles to the recovery transformation that we're trying to make here, and uh, some of them are uh, that is hol a holistic approach, that it is based on the idea of family inclusion, it's based on the idea of partnership, it's based on the idea of peer support. The most important thing is to have an inclusive process that brings everyone into the process from the very beginning. And uh, once that is done, I think uh, the, the, the next most important thing is to, to build a consensus around uh, a direction. Uh, and then I think it is to lay out uh, particular strategies and then to resource those strategies. The Consumer Council is comprised of representatives from, from the therapeutic groups. The purpose of it is, I hate to use the word advocate, but it's to bring to the table the needs of the consumers, their feelings, their complaints, and also to, um, we're in charge of, of programs and getting things going on. I'm in charge, and that's a huge shift in my uh, approach. I um, always thought somebody else was doing something for me or to me. So once I took that responsibility, it became all about me. It was important having, having not, not having someone tell me what to do, but someone help me along the way. Um, it has to be what I want to do. We as persons in recovery are running our own recovery program. We are the experts. The person who is in recovery is an expert of using or not using. You know, you're an expert in where you are at with your particular, you know, disease. The approach that we've taken is one where we've tried to do this in a very collaborative way. When we hear um, our providers saying things like, uh, th this is uh, the most exciting time that they've had in their career, uh, those, that's very fulfilling to us. We welcome a challenge as long as it's positive, and we knew that the outcome, you know, was going to be positive for our participants, so it was worth the challenge. You know, I don't necessarily see us providing treatment as much as we are engaged in the process with the consumer more closely. Uh, and that's a big difference, a, a very big difference of having consumer-led uh, involvement, consumer-led practices, um, and that's new. I'm very passionate because I see the, the progress and the success of our participants. Seeing people who are, are moving forward is, is really, really exciting. It, what it does is it, it really gives them a sense of hope that things can be different. The program itself will just be open to like a wider group and hopefully that um, people will kind of live the dreams that they have. It's about holding hope, it's about having faith, it's about believing, it's about achieving, it's about supporting. Having a network of friends, of people that I can call on. It's made me totally optimistic, it's given me hope, it's given me a lot more patience, which I was very short on. It just it makes me feel like I belong. I feel wonderful, I feel alive. Um, actually, I feel better now than quote unquote when I thought I was normal. It's really taught me to appreciate every moment of my life and everything in my life and everybody in my life. So I'm in eternal gratitude and humbled by what I have been given in my life. And I, I'm eager and willing to give back as where, wherever I can and however I can.